In this video, we're going to derive the henderson hasselbalch equation. And this equation is used to find the pH of buffers. And if you remember, a buffer always consists of a weak acid and its conjugate base, or a weak base and its conjugate acid, which turns out to be the same thing. Then we can derive this equation very easily by just writing out the acid reaction. So if we've got our weak acid, it is behaving like an acid because it's reacting with water and it's protonating it. And it is forming the hydronium ion, which we'll see that measure is going to control the pH and the counter ion. Now, in a buffer, you normally start with both this and this present. And we will see that when we have both these and these present, these concentrations aren't going to change very much at all in our ice chart problem. So the initial concentration of these will end up pretty much being the equilibrium concentration of these. All right. So... Ka is the concentration of products over reactants. So that is the hydronium times by the A minus, the conjugate base, over the weak acid at equilibrium. And uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to say that that is approximately equal to okay, the original concentration of A minus and the original concentration of our weak acid. We saw in our last ice chart problem that these concentrations barely change. When you start with both this and this, these values barely change at all. The hydronium concentration is the thing that really changes like crazy. So we're going to use the original concentrations instead of the equilibrium concentrations. All right, so how is that going to help us? So if we want to find the pH, we need to rearrange the equation for the thing that controls pH, that is the hydronium concentration. And we'll see that's equal to Ka times by the original concentration of acid over base. And the pH is the negative logarithm of that. So we can go ahead and we can take the logarithm and more probably the base 10 logarithm. And that is going to be the log now of the hydronium concentration. And that's going to be equal to the log of everything on the right hand side that is Ka times by the original concentration of our weak acid over our conjugate base and a couple of things here um, one is that when we've got the logarithm of a product log A times B that is exactly equal to the log of each thing added together log of A plus log of B in fact logarithms were invented as an easy way to do multiplication so we can go ahead and we can turn over the page and we can manipulate that and break that second term apart so now we can go ahead and we can say the log of the hydronium concentration is equal to the log of we had a product so we can take the log of Ka plus the log of that ratio so that was the ratio of our acid to our conjugate base in fact, we want not the log of H3O plus, we want the negative log of H3O plus. We can multiply everything by minus one. And if we multiply everything by minus one, we get the negative log of H3O plus. And remember, that's just the pH. And on the right hand side, if we multiply by negative one, we get the negative log of Ka. And remember, when we've got negative log of something, we can write that as P. So the negative log of Ka can be written in another way as PKA. And then the last term would be the negative log of the acid concentration over the conjugate base concentration. I'm going to drop the zeros there because I'm going to pretend that we can just ignore that. All right. Now, one of the things about logarithms is that if you've got the log of A to the power of N, that is equal to N times by the log of a all right we can do this in reverse if we know the value of n here we can raise it up to here so if you look at this equation here you've got a minus one out front so if you've got the minus log of something that's equal to the log oops of something to the minus one power all right now if you've got the minus log of say a over b that is equal to the log of a over b to the minus one power and if you raise something to the minus one power that's called inverting it so you can replace this as the log of the fraction turned upside down so up top here if you look at my equation here i've got the negative log of that i can actually go ahead and bring the power up front and make it a positive and raise it to the minus one power and i'm going to go ahead and delete this stuff here and just kind of manipulate this equation here so i'm going to bring the minus one up here and it's going to invert this expression here. So basically, it's going to make these two trade places. So I'm going to go ahead and erase 
Okay, and uh, actually, let me write that as a proper positive. Okay, and so now the acid and the base can flip positions. So the base concentration would be on the top, and the acid concentration would be on the bottom. And this thing right here then is our famous Hendelson Hasselbalch equation or the HH equation for short. And so we can use this to calculate the pH of a buffer. All we need to know is the pKa, so the negative log of the acid ionization constant, and the concentration of the conjugate acid and conjugate base. I also like to think about this as how do you remember which way around this is? Well, remember, if you increase the acid concentration, you'll make the pH lower, so it has to be on the bottom. And if you increase the base concentration, it will make the pH higher, so it has to appear on the top. So that's how I always remember it's base over acid.